What if they're going to knock? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. And they're going to try to knock the door open if they shut it. I was just going to say. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's Hello everyone and welcome to First Congregational United Church of Christ worshiping this Sunday in a new location. We have been out of our building for close to two years now, have been worshiping in various locations all over town, and due to the winter Arctic blast we are experiencing this morning, coming at you from our parlor. There are a few announcements that I have. Um, Kyopal will be taking a little hiatus during these cold winter months. They will resume again in the spring, so stay tuned for that. Um, Nikki Ketchum will be out of the office January 15th through the 19th, so you can contact me with any church emergencies that you may have. Um, and we are also so thankful to all the members of the church for their generous donations to the uh, Teresa Shelter and the Maria House during our Stock the Stable event. And with that, please join me in our opening hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. worship. Nick, you should have emailed this to you. You should have received an email from the office with um, our call to worship as well as our order of worship printed. We praise you, O oh God, for you are our God and we are your people. 
Wonderful are you and your works, O oh God, we know them very well. Search us and know us, creator. Remove us from shadows and into your presence. Wonderful are your works, O oh God, we know them very well. Place your hand upon us, gracious one, as we worship you and minister in your name. Wonderful are your works, O oh God, we know them very well. And now, wherever it is that you are, take a moment to settle into your chair. Breathe in and breathe out, closing your eyes and centering yourself as we prepare for prayer. Join me in our prayer of confession. Lord God, how glad we are for your unending mercies and grace. Because we now, in Christ, have miraculously become a chosen and holy people. Yet we confess that we often forget just how deeply loved we are in Jesus. Please forgive us for taking that love lightly. May we grow in spiritual maturity and faithfully forgive each other as the Lord has forgiven us. Dress us daily in the wardrobe of tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. May we love consistency in the manner that you love. Help us to do so for all your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear this assurance of pardon. This is the good news of the gospel, and it is for you and for all. Whatever you have done, whatever you have failed to do, whoever you are, whoever you wish you were but are not, you are accepted, you are abundantly loved, you are washed clean and raised up. You are forgiven and set free. In the love of Jesus Christ, you are truly loved forever. As we celebrate Epiphany, Christ in embodied human form, we pray for God's blessings on the church, the world, and indeed all of God's creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth. Let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards. That is all the resources and outreach bring hope and healing to all communities. Delight in the goodness of your creation, God of the fig trees and the fertile soil. In the midst of winter, when days are cold and wind can pierce, remind us of the warmth of your love. Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully, God of wisdom. Give them visions of justice and unity. Lead them to action that promotes partnership and uplifts those on the margins of society. Hold in your care any who suffer or struggle. You know our inner hearts. Be present with any who are oppressed, anyone who is a victim of racism or cultural bias and all who long for restoration. Give this congregation the anticipation and excitement so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world. 
Make us faithful as we build communities of inclusion and mutual care. God, who raised Jesus and will also raise us in spirit and truth, we remember all who have died and are at peace among the saints. This morning, we lift up the family of Cody Gilden, the McDermott family for the loss of Wayne's mother, Lana. And we especially remember the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose faithful advocacy for peace and justice continues to embolden the church. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our heart in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our special music will come from Leo. We will very much look forward to hearing um, a doxology by Mary Bryant in a later uh, worship service. Leo, I forgot the name of your song, so if you could introduce it, that would be great. The name of the song is Glorious Day.
not Leo's, Leo and I's first time doing something like this. Um, we, in fact, during COVID did probably about 10 worship services or so, the two of us, um, in Leo's basement. And there was a poster of the Beatles behind where we recorded. So the little church in Ryan, Iowa, Golden Congregational, if maybe they're watching, hello, used to call us the Church of the Fab Four. <laughs> With that, let's get back to Epiphany. We are in the season of Epiphany, and clearly in this house, the Christmas decorations do not go down until the season of Epiphany is over, at least not this year. And that's because the season of Epiphany is the season of light and the season of revelation a season of searching and discovering, of finding and of knowing. And I wonder what we can learn from Epiphany in this day and age. If Jesus were here right now, looking at what we're looking at, what would Jesus see? Our reading today comes from a gospel written by a man named John. We encounter a skeptic in this gospel named Nathaniel, who thinks he knows exactly who God is and how God operates. He is sure that the Messiah can't possibly come from a backwater town like Nazareth. Nazareth is not good enough for the divine in Nathaniel's opinion. Our story begins with Jesus going to Galilee and finding Philip and inviting him to follow me. Philip accepts the call without hesitation and then runs off to find his friend Nathaniel. And he finds him sitting under a fig tree. And he says, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. But Nathaniel isn't impressed. His perspective won't allow him to see anything fresh or surprising in a simple carpenter from the wrong side of the tracks. And instead of arguing with Nathaniel, though, Philip simply tells his doubtful friend to come and see. When Nathaniel does so, he receives the shock of his life. 
As soon as he sees Jesus, before they exchange a single word, Jesus says, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And I saw you under the fig tree. Immediately, Nathaniel moves from doubt to faith from ignorance to knowledge, he experiences an epiphany. So let's listen to our gospel text coming from John, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Philip said to him, Come and see. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of the Nazareth? And Philip said, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Word of God, word of life. Three words that stand out to me that got me going on my sermon today. Come and see. Come and see. This story at its core is not about what Nathaniel sees, though. It is about what Jesus sees. It is a story about Jesus' way of looking and seeing, and what makes salvation possible is not what Nathaniel sees in Jesus, it's what Jesus sees in Nathaniel. Seeing, of course, is something that's always selective. We have choices when it comes to what we see, what we prioritize, what we name, and what we speak out to one another. And the selves that we present to the world are layered. And it takes both love and patience to sift through all of the layers and find what's at the core of who we are. Doing that work, doing that difficult work of sorting through the layers is healing. It's holy. It's life-changing. And it happens to us when we are deeply seen, deeply known, truly named and accepted for who we are underneath the layers that we put on. Jesus had a choice when it came to seeing Nathaniel. What he saw and spoke out was Nathaniel's honesty. There are other things he could have pointed out. He could have pointed out Nathaniel's cynicism, his doubts, his prejudices. All of those things were true. They're right there in our gospel text. But what Jesus did is look past all of that and called out Nathaniel's honesty, his purity of heart. Those are the qualities that Jesus chose to lift up and name, the things he wanted to highlight about Nathaniel. Which has me thinking this week that it might be a very good idea to try to cultivate a practice of seeing as Jesus sees. Is it possible for us to try and see ourselves, other people, and the situations that we are in through the holy lens of Jesus? 
to see our present moment as Jesus might see it. Now, it is a scientific and well-documented fact that the ability to broaden your lens and take in a wider perspective is crucial. It helps us to understand ourselves, to empathize with others. When you see the world through someone else's eyes, it's easier to reach them in love as we see Jesus doing repeatedly in the Gospels, not only in the text we read today, but in other texts throughout all four Gospels. Now, this is something I work on as a speech-language pathologist. We work on social-emotional learning. And there are stages that we go through as we develop as young people to grown up people, stages of empathy and perspective taking that develop in each one of us. For example, I think most of us know that say a preschool or toddler age child will be very undifferentiated and egocentric, right? And as we grow and develop, our social and emotional skills often grow, too. But sometimes, I think, especially when we're at our worst, that we can fall back into those old ego-driven patterns and become fixed on a very narrow way of viewing the world. This narrow view happens for a variety of reasons. Listening and seeing something, something different from what you already believe requires a lot of courage. It's easy to feel attacked and vulnerable when the views are, of others are different from your own. It's easy to feel like seeing an issue from another viewpoint might mean you are invalidating yourself. It might mean that you were wrong all along and even scarier, it might mean you are wrong in other areas of life that you are not admitting to yourself yet. We all have our own unique experiences and beliefs and biases that shape how we perceive the world. And it is so challenging to step out of those expectations and beliefs and biases and truly understand someone else's. That's why polarization happens. And I think right now, polarization is running particularly deep in our society, especially in that political arena. It's like we've been conditioned into believing that one perspective is correct and only one and all others are wrong and there can only be one right way of looking at things. But here's the thing, we're called to be the church, and we are called to see all things new through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We are called to see like Jesus. So then, what would happen if we were to leave our comfortable vantage points and dared to believe that just maybe we might be limited in our original certainties about each other, about God, and about the world. Instead of deciding that we know everything there is to know, what would happen if we came to God and asked for a fresh vision, a new lens, a holy lens, to see as Jesus sees? To see as Jesus sees is to approach all of life with curiosity and to believe that we are indeed holy mysteries to one another. To see as Jesus sees is to enter into the joy of being deeply seen and deeply known and having the very best in us called out and brought into the light. To see as Jesus sees is to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to us a new enthusiasm, a new life, new ways of following Christ and being church in the world. To see as Jesus sees is to see the world through his eyes, to see a bigger plan and a bigger picture, to see others with more compassion, 
as other people made in the holy image of God. To see as Jesus sees is to learn about people or ideas you would have never otherwise noticed. To see as Jesus sees gives you a more complete view of the whole world and how you behave in it. To see as Jesus sees is to learn a lot more about yourself. And I don't know about you, but this gives me hope. Hope because we are held by the words of Jesus that we see in our gospel text today. He says, you will see greater things than these. I believe we will. I believe we will see heaven open. We will see angels. We will see the love and justice of God. So don't be afraid. Don't hide don't despair. Live boldly into the calling of epiphany, of light and revelation. Name, speak, love. God is still speaking. Many good things can come out of Nazareth. Amen. And now, may God bless you and keep you. May God look upon you and be gracious unto you. May God's face shine upon each and every one of you, keep you warm, and bring you peace. Now, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> um, our closing hymn is As With Gladness, Men of Old.